What's up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm back at it again, bringing you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. This time, I got a pretty interesting topic to give you guys. It is 40 facts on some of the members of the Death Watch. Now this topic was requested by somebody on our Facebook page, so if you guys have any suggestions, any comments, or anything like that, that you want to make sure that we read, I'd say the Facebook page is a pretty good place to go. Now I look at that every day, um, you can message us, you can send us links, pictures, whatever. Uh, we also have a Twitter account, so check that out, simply type in One Mind Syndicate, I believe the links are in the description below. But yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, comment them down below, or send us some messages on Facebook. Now without further ado, here's 40 facts on the characters of the Death Watch. Let's begin with a little bit of lore on the captain of the Marines errant, Kael Vibius. So Kael Vibius serves as a watch captain in the Death Watch, and he has a burning desire for vengeance against Xenos, which marks him out even amongst the alien hunters of the Death Watch. During the Cornith Crusade, Vibius and a squad of his fellow Marines errant were captured by the Dark Eldar and were taken into the webway to the dark realm of Kamara. Surviving their cruel torture at the hands of these Xenos, Vibius bided his time until he was able to seize the opportunity to escape, leading a slave revolt against his surprised captors. Eventually the Space Marines fought their way to freedom and returned to the Imperium. Vibius was nominated for the honor of representing his chapter in the Death Watch and rose swiftly through the ranks until he led his own kill team. When his former commander, Captain Braun of the Dark Sun's chapter, was mortally wounded, he recommended Vibius to be promoted to the rank of Watch Captain in his steed, a role he has held ever since. Esteban de Dominova, Captain of the Crimson Fists, is currently serving his fifth vigil with the Jericho Reach Death Watch, and he is a highly respected apothecary whose prowess in the operating field has reached near mythic proportions among the kill teams that which he has served with. Indeed, many battle brothers currently serving in a vigil in the Jericho Reach owe their limbs, if not their very lives, to his quick thinking and sure hands. Along with his prodigious medical skills, and the usually finely honed warrior abilities possessed by every battle brother, Captain Dedamanova is also noted Xenobiologist, who is known to work closely with the Ordo Xenos and the Mechanicus's Magobiologist in various capacities. He is an intense, shallow-faced battle brother with pale, colorless eyes, and he is prone to brooding silences and piercing glares. And now on to Andar Scarian who is a member of the Astro Claw Space Marine Chapter, who was seconded to the Jericho Reach in order to serve in the Death Watch. His arrival was the cause of much controversy due to his chapter's questionable actions in the decades before the outbreak of the Bad Ab War. Nevertheless, Scarion was allowed to commence his vigil with the Death Watch and served for over five decades with honor, achieving the rank of Watch Captain. Like his chapter master Luft Huron, Scarion is a proud and ruthless warrior with a keen grasp of strategy and military politics, as he has proven himself to be a valuable asset in liaising with the Achilles Crusade's officers. Scarion regards non-Astartes with a mixture of scorn and pity, holding that the Astartes ideal is fundamentally superior to the frailty of the common run of humanity. He masks his arrogance well when political goals require it, but discards this facade when amongst other Astartes, seeing little issue with collateral damage amongst human allies who he regards as inherently expendable. He expects the kill teams under his command to perform to the most exacting of standards, and he does not tolerate laxity, weakness, or failure. In battle, he takes up a single lightning claw and a bolter to confront any enemies of mankind. Uriel Ventress, the fourth company captain of the Ultramarines. Uriel Ventress temporarily assumed command of a Death Watch kill team when he replaced the fallen captain of the Imperial Fists, Bannon, when he was killed during the defense of Tarsus Ultra from the Tyranids. 
Uriel Ventress led the Death Watch to a Tyranid hive ship to kill the Norn Queen with a gene poison derived from the genome of Elictor. Later, Ventress was exiled from the Ultramarines due to breaking the Codex Astartes, and he was condemned to fulfill a death oath in the Eye of Terror against the Iron Warriors. Ventress completed this quest, and he returned to the Honorable Service with his chapter. Now, Ventress is a pretty badass dude. Um, after reading his lore, you know, thoroughly, we might just do a 40 facts on him. So let me know if you guys want some 40 facts on Ventress of the Ultramarines. But now that we talked about Bannon of the Imperial Fists, let's get on to his lore. Bannon served as the Watch Captain of a Death Watch kill team that was summoned to Tarsus Ultra to assist Lord Inquisitor Cryptman in combating the Tyranids of High Fleet Leviathan. When a lictor appeared in the Imperial City of Erebus, Bannon was ordered by the Venerable Inquisitor to capture it alive. Following this deadly errand, Bannon led his team on an extremely hazardous mission in order to power up a ground-based defense laser that was located to the rear area of the main Tyranid assault. Firing the defense laser in conjunction with the attack of the Ultramarine Strike Cruiser, Vae Victus, it allowed the defending forces to destroy one of the two remaining Tyranid hive ships. Unfortunately, Bannon's position would be overrun by the ensuing Tyranid force, and so his Death Watch team was extracted via Thunderhawk gunship. Bannon was the last to be extracted, but as he was being lifted aboard by a Rappel Cable, his leg was seized by a monstrous Tyranid bioform. Refusing to allow his team to be killed, Bannon bravely cut his line, sacrificing himself. Surviving witnesses report last seeing Bannon disappear beneath a tide of chitin and claws, armed with only his combat blade, fighting to the last. Following his death, command of the team briefly fell to Brother Hengast, but was later assumed by the Ultramarine's fourth captain, Ventress. And now we have McCrenton, Senior Tech Marine of the Storm Wardens. A member of the Storm Wardens chapter from the Calixus sector, the Senior Tech Marine is a fervent follower of the Machine God and a master craftsman known throughout the Watch Fortress for his skill as a weapon monger. An unpopular and radical member of the Watch Fortress Heroic Forges, this Senior Tech Marine is known and widely avoided for his taste for Xenos tech devices, and he will do everything in his power to collect these cursed items. It is also widely known that there is an ongoing feud between McCretton and Forge Master Greyweaver, whose fervent hatred of alien technology puts them at frequent odds. And last we have Harl Greyweaver, the Iron Priest of the Space Wolves. Greyweaver is an Iron Priest of the ferocious Space Wolves chapter who has been seconded to the elite Xenos hunting Death Watch. He has been the Forge Master of Eroic since his predecessor answered his summons to serve the Achilles Crusade over a decade ago. While the influence of Greyweaver's time in the unorthodox halls of the Death Watch shows in his servo harness and other small deviations from the traditions of the Iron Priest of Fenris's Isles of Iron, he is not nearly as compliant with the teachings of Mars as many of the Tech Marines who serve under him. And that brings us to the end of this lore. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below, and if not, give me some more suggestions, or you can send me a personal message over on Facebook. Uh, once again guys, this was a viewer request, so thank you for submitting it, and uh, keep those requests coming. Um, let me know what you guys think about the uh, Death Watch. I feel like it's just a bunch of Marines from a bunch of chapters being lumped together. And yeah, they're supposed to be Xenos fighters, but I don't really see a purpose for them specifically. I don't know, that's just me. If you guys like them, let me know why in the comments down below. And guys, we are almost hitting 50,000 subscribers. We are like 500 subscribers away from the point of this recording, so we might hit it. Uh, and if we do, we've got a giveaway coming, so please subscribe, 
like the videos, share it with your friends, let everybody know the epicness that is Warhammer 40k. And that's all the stuff I've got for you guys today. Please, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I am the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I am signing out. Oh,